Hi friends, it's Matt from Great Neck Library and I'm coming back with another Unity tutorial for you guys. Um, hopefully you've seen the first two. If you haven't, go back and check them out. Uh, if you have, you should be looking at a scene something like this. Um, we should have a player character. We have a capsule, which is a sound emitter. And we have two different floors which uh, are going to be triggers for certain sounds. So playing the scene, it looks something like this. So we have a character, we have a 3D sound coming from this capsule. So the closer we get to it, the louder it gets. And also, depending on where we stand, which way we're facing, we'll hear it in different sides of our speakers or headphones. And also we we all, uh, we installed a trigger so that when we cross this threshold, we hear some cave ambience. And when we go back, it stops. So uh, we'll go ahead and tidy those up in a future episode. But today I'm gonna show you how to attach a footstep sound to our character uh, so that when he walks, he makes he makes a footstep noise. So in order to do that, we are going to go and find the animation on our player character. So I've already imported an audio file, which is just one footstep for now. Uh, I'm going to show you guys in a future episode how we can have uh, a lot of footstep sounds and have a script choose randomly which footstep sound that's played uh, so we can get some variation. But for now, we just have this simple footstep sound. Um, what we need to do is we're going to go to uh, up on the left here, our third person controller, and we need to find the place uh, where the animations are stored. So we're going to click on this arrow that's going to come to a drop down box. And we're just going to go through and open these up and take a look where it might be. So if it's, you can't find it in here, I think we're going to be looking in the folder itself. So we're looking at our assets folder. We're going to click on this, which is our third person uh, character. Open it up. We're going to click on not animator. It's not in there. Let's click on prefabs. Let's see where this is. Aha. Okay. So third person character, 3D models, animations, and uh, probably, oh, it was just there. Here we go. So we're gonna click on, or we're gonna highlight this one, basic free movement, okay? So assets, in vector, third person controller, 3D models, animations, and then you wanna highlight this one right here. And on the right, you'll see in the inspector window, we're gonna get this, um, which is a list of the animations. This is where we need to be. Okay, so at the top, you'll see these tabs, make sure your animation tab is checked. And here are the animations that are stored in this uh, game object, in this file. So here we want, uh, in our case, we want run. And if we play this, I'm just gonna make this bigger so you can see what's going on. If we play this run animation, this is what happens. So it's just endless repeating. When the player presses down the W key, the player is going to run forward and it plays this animation. So what we can do in this is we can choose a frame. You see, we can cycle through all these frames here and choose a point which we want to play our footstep sound. Okay. So I can I can say right about there as the character puts his foot down, that's where we want one footstep. And then again, about here for the other footstep. So, but first what I need to do is create a C sharp script in order to uh, enable me to call that Okay, so we'll worry about this a little bit later. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my third person character controller on the left. 
and I'm going to attach a script to it. So your script has to be on the uh, object that is being animated. So in this case, it's the character that's being animated, right? So all you're gonna do is click on this just once. This will come up with all the options, all the components. So remember, this is a game object. These are the components of the object. So we have the animator, right? Which is uh, as it sounds. And what we wanna do is add a component. We want to add a script and we're gonna call it something pretty obvious like player animation sounds. And we are going to click new script, create and add. And then we'll give this a sec and we should have a new script added to our character. It's taking its time. There we go. Okay. So we, here's our script added to the character. We're going to double click here and that's going to open our blank script in a, in a code editor. So whichever one you've got it might be mono develop, might be visual studio. So here's what we need to do. In order for this to work, we need the most basic thing in order for a sound to play, which is an audio source. Okay, so we need an audio source and we'll call it um, animation sound player. Semicolon at the end. At the start, remember what we did last time with audio source, we need to get the component, right? So we are going to get the component, which actually I will add here now. So remember the script that's attached to this game object is calling components from it, right? It's, comp it's calling from these components, but right now I don't have an audio source attached to this. So that's what I need to do. I need to attach a new audio source. Great. Now for this, I don't want it to play on awake because I only want the footstep sound to trigger when the code says so. So play on awake is going to be turned off. Um, and I also don't want the sound to loop. I only want the sound to play when the, um, when the code is told to by the animation. So, for the audio clip, remember the audio source is a speaker. Imagine it as a speaker. The audio clip is the actual file that needs to be played. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this button right here, which is the lock inspector button right up here, the small padlock. Now what this is gonna do is if I don't have this uh, locked, every time I click away, it's gonna get rid of whatever I was on, which is really annoying if I need to import stuff. So I'll go back to my third person character. I'm gonna lock this. And now, no matter what I do over here, I can click on different folders. This stays up, which is what I want to happen. So I'm gonna to go to my audio source and the player character. I'm gonna find my audio file, which is in audio. And here's my footstep. Okay, there's my footstep. So that's fine. That's what I need for now. And we'll leave it as a 2D sound. So it's gonna sound, it's not gonna be spatialized like the capsule sound. We're gonna go back to our script and we have our audio source. We need in the start function. So the start function is called uh, when the game is started. And what we wanna do is say animation sound player, which is the variable that we've called our audio source equals get component of type audio source. So basically, same as last time, I said, there's gonna be an audio source that I'm using in the code, right? I'm gonna call it 
animation sound player. I can call it whatever I want, but I want to call it something that's obvious when I look back at my code. So I've called it animation sound player. I've said in the start function, before the game begins, before the first frame, I've said that this animation sound player, which is what I've called this audio source, is going to get the component from the game object. I'm getting this component here that I've added, but you've got to make sure that you actually add the component to the game object itself. There are other ways to do it. You can you can instantiate things, which means basically means to just create them on the spot. But for now, we want to get the components that are already there inside the game object. So we're getting the component of type audio source. So that's what we've done. We're saying we want to use an audio source to do something in the code, in which in this case, again, we want to play a sound. So now what do we do to play this footstep sound? Well, we have to create our, our own function. So right here, we have a start function or a method, they're sometimes called. A method or a function is just basically a block of code that performs certain actions. So the update function is called every frame, once per frame, which means if you need to check things on the go, you need to keep checking something. You need to keep checking the location of something. You need to keep checking the player's health, something like that. That's what you'd use for. But for us, we're gonna create our own function. We're gonna type private void. And the name of our function can be what we want. So in our case, let's call this player footstep sound. Again, so it's really obvious. Open and close parentheses, and you want to use your curly braces, your curly brackets. Open and close those, and you can press enter, and it will make a nice space for you on the next lines. So all the code that needs to go inside this function has to go between these two brackets. Anything outside of this that you want to happen in here will not be counted in the function. You've got to make sure it's between the two. And in our case, all we need to do is play the sound that's in the audio source, which we already imported. It's this file right here. So we're gonna say audio source. Oh, no, we're not. We're gonna say animation sound player dot play. Okay. And again, open and close parentheses, semicolon. So basically what happens is whenever this function is called somewhere else in our code, this is what's gonna happen. This audio source attached to this game object, in this case, the player, is gonna play the sound that's in the audio clip that we dragged in. So now we have to say, well, when is this function gonna be called? And it's gonna be called every time the player steps, which is why we do it through the animation. So we're gonna go back to our assets, third person, 3D models, animations. And if, by the way, something you'll find regularly is if you don't see what's happening on the right side of the screen, this doesn't update, it's because you've left it locked. This will not change if, this, if the uh, inspector is locked. So you just need to unlock it. And this is where we need to be. So we're in assets, third person controller, 3D models, animations, and then this basic free movement. Just highlight it and here we are. With the animation tab highlighted, we're gonna click on run from the clips. So we'll click run. We're gonna scroll down a little bit and you're gonna see these uh, options to the left. We wanna click on events. So you're gonna click on the arrow, it's gonna open it up and you get this little timeline. So you can't drag anything on this timeline. Okay, this is not gonna work. In order to uh, move the timeline along, you need to be down here in this window. We're gonna drag this cursor, you just click and hold, left click and hold, drag this cursor along to the right until you think you wanna play footstep. So for me, I think right there is perfect. Once you're at this point, you're gonna to come to this plus sign on the left, right underneath events, click once, and it's gonna create a new event for us. Now then, we want our event, as you, say, as you see here, it says function, that's the exact name of the function that we created in our script. So in our case, we called it player footstep sound. Just make sure that you don't include the parentheses in the event. So I'm just gonna copy the text, the name of our function, only the text, not the parentheses. 
control C. Let's go back to the animation window. In the new event, we're going to overwrite that control V player footstep sound. So at this point during this animation, the player footstep sound function is going to be called, which is this. And for us, that's going to play the sound that we want. Okay. Now then, the only thing we have left to do here is in the object, it's looking for the script where this function lives. That's all it's looking for. So we're going to, we can do two things. We can either drag the script in to it, or you can click this little button, this circle to the right, and it'll give you a list of all kind of objects in your scene. We can just go ahead, type in the top search bar, whatever our script was called. So we called it player animation sound. So let's go back. I'll type in player and there it is, player animation sound, double click. There it is. And uh, I will do the same for the left foot. So we're going to drag this along again, left foot here, I think it's fine. Click the plus to add the footstep. Control V to paste the player footstep sound the uh, function from the script. And it automatically saved the player animation sound script because I already added it in another event, which is perfect. So we have our footstep sounds now. That's all we need for this particular thing. You must make sure you hit apply in order for this to work. So you're going to click apply right here. It's going to save, update. And I'm going to save my project myself, control and S. Okay. In theory, this should work. When we play, when we run, we should hear some footstep sounds. Let's try. And there we go. Now we're hearing the exact same footstep because I only uploaded one file. So it doesn't sound great at the minute, but the main thing is to get you guys to understand how uh, adding sounds to animations work. So you can feasibly go through all these animations and add sounds yourself now, right? So if we go to the animator, if you want to add footsteps to your walk animation, it's the same principle. You can walk, you drag this along, there's a footstep. You can add a footstep right there. You go to events, you find the spot, you add with a plus sign, you're gonna paste in whatever function you called, and you're gonna make sure that the object is pointing to the script where your function is located. Okay? So I'm gonna delete that. Um, same thing with sprint, run, walk, idle. And let's take a look at this strafe movement. Uh, let's just apply that. Strafe movement, let's see what's in the strafe movement. Walk back, walk back right. See, there's so many animations here that we could add footsteps to. Um, so play doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So we can add uh, footstep sounds or other noises like the, the maybe the metal suit rattling, something like that to these animations to make it sound more realistic. So that's about it for today. We've learned to uh, include footstep sounds to animations. You guys can feel free to experiment and add your own. Uh, next week, I'm going to show you guys how to add multiple footstep sounds uh, to your character so that the game engine is going to pick randomly from a group of footsteps so we get more realism. And I'm going to show you how to randomize some volume and some pitch. And that way we're going to make our footsteps sound nice and varied and nice and realistic. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Um, stay safe and I'll see you guys next week.